Good morning. Time for Autumn's first morning boost. Yay! <laughs> and we are so happy and proud to have our first speaker, who is an alumni from uh, Sharma School of Entrepreneurship. Uh, about 10 years ago, I think, Maria, wasn't it? She needs a coffee to wake up here before she starts. <laughs> Too many who would, uh, wanted to talk to her in the beginning. So today we are going to listen to the, the uh, journey of your, uh, from being at Chalmers School of Entrepreneurship to today run your company, uh, Monivent. And you're going to tell us about your experiences and your uh, time as an entrepreneur these 10 years, I think. We will see. And after you have talked, we also have about 10 minutes for questions for the audience. So you will know everything that you would like to know, I think, almost anyway, before you leave today. So warmly applaud to Maria Lindquist. Welcome. Oh. Thank you so much for the invitation to be here. I'm glad to see you all. Um, yeah, my name is Marilyn Quist. I am business developer and co-founder of Monivent. I'm originally from, brought up on a farm in Småland, always wanted to become a medical doctor, although after a few failed attempts, I changed this route and started studying here instead, industrial engineering and management, and went on to the School of Entrepreneurship, which I was very happy with. Then I got to start Monivent. So Monivent is a small medtech company within the care of newborns. So we help uh, caregivers support them in taking care of newborns who are unable to breathe at birth. So basically about three to six percent of all newborns require help to start breathing, where you manually push air into the lungs of the baby to get the blood oxygenated and get the breathing started. Although, if you give too little air or too much air, this can cause injuries to both the lungs and the brain. So it's important that you do this right. But it's a very delicate task and it's very hard to know how much air you actually provide. And the only thing, they're lacking good tools to do this. And basically, all they can do is look at chest rise, how much it rises on an inflation. So what we developed was an objective way of measuring how much air you put into the baby's lungs with sensors that we integrate into the face mask that you apply to the face. These sensors uh, communicate wirelessly to an external monitor where the caregiver can easily get feedback on primarily the volumes given and see the, with a simple color change that you are within the green zone or not. And you also get other parameters such as if there's leakage on the face mask and you need to adjust that and so on. Um, and with this feedback they can continuously just adjust the treatment and ensure that they have an effective and gentle treatment to the newborns. And just to give you uh, an idea of what this actually looks like, this is a short movie. So today, Monivent uh, has eight employees. We're located at Lindholmen here in Gothenburg. We are now a company listed on Spotlight Stock Market since two years back. We have two products on the market, so basically two versions of the same product concept. One is for training and education only on a, when practicing the skills on a mannequin, and the other version is the real clinical version that are used on babies. We are um, selling this via distributors, so we have a network of uh, about 25, um, that covers about 25 markets in primarily Europe. And our clinical device was C marked 2020, um, and due to COVID restrictions, we got to launch it about one year ago. Uh, 
and we were happy to see that this really seems to be a product that they have been waiting for, uh, with sales picking up almost right away. So going from almost no sales before that, we had uh, over a million in quarterly sales the quarters after launch. So it was a really good confirmation that what we had been developing for all those years actually turned out to be the right product, which is one of the big concerns when you keep doing this and you just question if, it's, if it was the right thing. So it started about 10 years ago now in this very building when uh, I uh, was presented with um, or this neonatologist, so a medical doctor specialized in newborn care was presenting one of his daily challenges. Taking care of newborns who are unable to breathe and you just stand there and you don't really know what you are doing. You're working in darkness is his way of describing it and it felt like this must be, there must be a way that we can do this better. And they had also done, done some measurements, um, him together with another medical doctor and a lung researcher from Chalmers, who together did measurements on a few babies, and they saw that so many times the volumes given to those babies were way above what was actually recommended. And they thought they were pretty good at what they were doing. So it was really an eye-opener for them uh, and a starting point for Monument. So he presented this idea, which I liked because it was in the medical sphere, so I could become a doctor from the business side instead. Uh, it was also something that qu seemed quite simple to do. We could probably be on the market within a couple of years' time, which is where I wanted to be. And also, we got all this advice about, or we got to hear that a lot of projects that fail early is because the uh, entrepreneurs of the idea don't get along with the idea providers. And this seemed like a person that I would really like to work with. And it turned out to be true. I mean, still today, I would consider him to be a good friend of mine. So they worked out well. So together with two fellow students, we started working on this project then almost 10 years ago. With a fact-finding mission, just learning more about the problem and what was out there and, and how this could be solved. So just talking to a lot of clinicians and, and companies and trying to find out what had been done in the past. And a year later, um, so I guess you all know the concept here where you at School of Entrepreneurship, how the students are the entrepreneurs and the ideas are coming from, uh, from uh, or at least in my, when I did it, from an external party usually. Um, after a year during, at graduation, my two fellow students decided to take on other career paths and I was curious to learn what I could do with Monifant if I was to do it my way. Um, so I decided to continue on my own which was probably one of my first mistakes. Because for just the sake of mental health, I would really recommend that you kind of have a partner in crime with you to share the daily headaches and really to bounce ideas with. Um, but I thought it was a great idea to, to do it by myself. I wasn't alone for very long though, because Oscar here uh, joined almost right away. He started with his master thesis project and then continued on, on um, um, employment after that. So he did basically, I mean, we had another developer joining after a couple of years, but for a long time it was a very small team. And when he was doing everything from the technical side, so it was hardware, software, electronics, mechanics, everything. And I was doing everything that wasn't particularly technical development. So all the business side of things and IP and marketing and so on, corporate governance. But we also had great support from those three idea providers that would be happy to share everything they knew about the clinical stuff and, and also the technical background to it. So we spent a lot of time just learning from them and starting developing this the concept, which took us a couple of years until we really knew what we were about to develop. Um, and we, have, we were a small team, but we had great ambitions and we were determined that we were gonna change this care and how it was carried out. So now we have come quite a step forward from where we were then. We have overcome some major obstacles and also achieved some great things. And we actually have a clinical product on the market, although it was, we were quite a few more than just me and Oscar then. But starting off, we were, we were young, inexperienced, naive, 
and had no idea what it takes to actually develop and bring a medical device to the market. So we learned that the hard way and that's why I wanted to share a few of the things that I think have been important for our success or why we haven't failed and, um, and also some lessons along the way. First, it might sound obvious or cliche, but team is really important. And I'm so grateful for each and every one who has joined us over the years and just the engagement and loyalty among every one of them. It's really, um, it's really fun to be able to kind of create that culture in a company. And we always had this really open and honest atmosphere where everyone is helping each other out and um, and also, it's been one of the things that we've been really careful in, in when we have been recruiting people, just to see what, what drives them and why they would want to have this job. So we are, I think we can say that we all share this, this common drive and that we want to make something that matters. And we also make sure that everyone feels engaged in the project and, and, and the successes and we share everything. Uh, on um, celebrate everything together because everyone has worked so hard for every milestone that we achieve. Um, initially, um, we did not have the funding to get a lot of experienced people within the operational team. And then we would instead put them in the board of directors. And I would make sure to utilize them and get their advice on a very regular basis and not just have a put of directors that looks good on paper, but actually use them and have them engaged. So that's been very useful to get that kind of experience into the team from an early stage. Uh, later on, we were also um, able to get some more senior competences into the team. For instance, when I went to my first parental or maternity leave in 2018, we uh, recruited an external CEO uh, who took over after me and I went into role of business developer instead, which was a really, it it's been really good. And I think today we have a very good mix of not only young parents uh, who don't sleep at night, but also some more experienced people who, who have done more than just working for monuments in their lives. Um, the other thing that I think we've done quite good is to be out there and expose ourselves and discuss the idea and what we're doing from a very early stage. Uh, some might be afraid of, of talking about the idea because they think that someone's going to steal it. Um, but it's also, I mean, this is not a unique idea, really. Some, I mean, others have thought of the same thing before. The difference is to really make the effort of developing it. I mean, that's the hard part. So as soon as we had a prototype ready, we would go out there and show it to people. And that was also how we got the confirmation that we were on the right path. Because already 2014, I went on my first international congress in, in Canada and someone was interested. So uh, we, went, we found some electricity in a dark corner somewhere and put up the, the prototype. And there was more and more people gathering and soon there was a bit of a crowd standing there. We were very intrigued and, and interested in what we were doing and thought that, okay, when can I get it? And that was a few years ago now, but it was still something that we would get back to and be like, yeah, they are, we are on the right track and they really want to have this. So just by, by being out there, we could get some early feedback and um, we also decided along the way to, to first launch the product as a non-clinical device for training purposes only. So then the regulatory framework is completely different. So they would just use it when they practice the ventilation skills on a mannequin. And that way we could get some, some uh, feedback on the product concept that we could feed into the development of the clinical device. And we also had an excuse to be out there and present or exhibit and also say that this is something that is coming. So we can start kind of building the market already before the device was, uh, the clinical device was out there. So we could create the product and customer or um, company awareness. And now it's not just a solution that just popped up a year ago, but we've actually been there for quite some time and they start recognizing us. 
We also learned that everything takes longer and costs a lot more than what you initially think. Maybe you heard that you should estimate how much it's going to cost and how long it's going to take, and you just multiply that with P. And I said, no, not in our case. We're going to do it in two years. Uh, it took probably about seven. So it was more or less exactly that P factor in there. Um, but we were really, I mean, looking back, we were really inexperienced. We didn't really know at all what it takes. And just the regulatory framework of um, launching a medical device is really extensive. Um, and also, we didn't know from the beginning what really to, um, to develop either. We had, to, to, we had a need from the clinicians, but we had to come up with a solution. Um, and it's also not, probably not optimal to, I mean, we had financing for a month or maybe in the end a year at the time. And then so much of the planning actually has to be, or becomes affected of how you set up the milestones for those investors. So you can't really plan the, the product development in the most optimal way either. So that probably delayed the process a bit as well. And then there was numerous technical setbacks or obstacles that we would run into along the way. Um, but the comfort there is that for every problem that you solve, that, that problem is some, probably something that those who come after you would run into something similar as well. So with all that, you just build into more value into the product, basically, hopefully. We also learned from our perspective that this uh, concept development had to take its time. Because if we would have, I mean, we started off with this, um, with a need, but also they had done some measurements on a, a device that, would, that they had put together. It was basically the size of a, a shopping cart that they would roll into the de uh, delivery room to do those measurements. And obviously that's not a solution that would ever be a commercial product. But we kind of started with just trying shrinking that into a manageable size. But if that would have been the product that we developed to commercialize, it wouldn't have been the right product. So it probably took us about two years of going back and forth iterations, having lots of discussions, and also we were in a kind of a patentability discussion where we would need to find kind of unique, uh, the uniqueness of a product. So we then decided on, on the concept of doing a smart mask. We're building sensors wirelessly into the face mask and, um, and this, whole, this whole concept. And really, the other red thread through it all has been to create... What was out there already was really complex devices that you would need to be really engaged in order to use them. So we wanted to create something that would be useful not only for researchers, because that already existed, but for the daily user that would stand there, maybe do this once a year, but they were still maybe the ones needed the support the most, and they would be supported from our device. So we had this already in, in mind, that we would make it as user-friendly and simple as possible. But it was... Um, it was not really the, I mean, uh, for instance, the market was not ready for a solution where we started to develop it. Uh, for once, there were still discussions of whether there were countries where that didn't let wire, uh, Bluetooth into the hospitals. And uh, now when we launch it, there's never been a discussion about that. So the market and also the need for the product has matured a lot during the time that we had developed. So we developed a more complicated solution than what we could have, but also it is unique. So now we are in a much better position than what we would have been if we did what we first kind of intended to. And this is just a few pictures of what it has, how it has changed from this very bulky first prototype that we would be out there to, to demonstrate in the first place. It's to to um, first face mask concept with the sensors built into it and the monitor with everything in one, one piece, but it was still too bulky, so we created a more neat version of it. And, and this is what it looks like in use today. And our final lesson is also related to this, that 
like Henry Ford is supposed to say that if I had asked my customers what they wanted, they would have said a faster horse. And it's really hard to get the customers to kind of imagine a product that doesn't exist. So they would compare everything to what they already have. Um, so if we would have listened to them, it, um, it would have been another kind of complex device. They always wanted to see more parameters and they, um, um, yeah, they wanted more. And we thought that we want to stick to the simplicity part and make it as easy as possible. So it was when we decided on the concept, we really had to try to um, convince ourselves to stay on that path, which turned out to be right in the end. But it's really hard when those guys who are the most important in the field tell you that you need to do something differently and still say, no, we believe in this concept. But it can be quite important to, to kind of remind yourself why you're doing that. And in the end now, when we have the solution ready on the market, these same people who told us that you need to do more, and we would never use it unless you have waveforms, for instance, they're coming back to us now and saying that this is really a nice device, and this is exactly what we need out there. So it turned out to be right, although they would tell us something completely different 10 years ago. So just to summarize this a bit from the entrepreneurial side of it, we, um, it has been a roller coaster for sure, those 10 years. And if we have been to some downs, especially during, seemed like a never ending story of technical setbacks and problems that needed to be solved, we are now more of the upside where we have been able to launch the product and we can be out there with customers and actually see what we can manage with this product and we can, what we can achieve. And of course, the team, again, is a big part of this journey. And it's not just an, a, any job with colleagues. It's, for me, it is something more, obviously. And the whole team, I think, feel the same thing. We are building something together. We are on a mission to change something and change the care out there. So we really, we're in this together and it just makes every success so much sweeter when you celebrate this together. And also, one of the most important things during the journey has been the feedback that we could get from customers when we were demonstrating all these early devices. And we've been to congresses almost for all those years where we would be exhibiting the device with just a mannequin. So they could get the product in their hands and try it. And so many times the feedback has been so great that it just oh my God, this is fantastic, and when can I have it, and why doesn't this already exist? So it's been so clear that there was an, a need for this product. And now we've come so far that we actually also get to hear the, the real clinical stories from inside the delivery room. How a customer the other day was treating um, a 400 gram baby with the support of our device, and another one with a very with a difficult case of a baby that needed some, some uh, extraordinary measures. He would do this and also everyone in that room said that this baby is probably going to die here, it's never going to leave this room. And he was able to provide this baby the care that it needed with the support from our device. And he would actually call it his guardian angel during this process while he was managing to get the baby stable and bring it into the ICU for further care. So just hearing those stories is what gives you, or gives me goosebumps and realizes that everything has been worthwhile because we really get to make a difference out there. So uh, with that said, I think I will open up for questions. <laughs>